Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, again to the voice of the eternal gospel. We will continue today with these presentations right on the book of Revelations, all these warnings and prophecies for this end time. But before we do that, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Let's pray, Brother Patrick. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time again to study your word, to open up the book of Revelation. And we thank you for Jesus, who is the faithful and true witness Please help us to be willing to turn at any rebuke and chastening that you might give to us. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit to do that work and to strengthen us and be our teacher at this time. We thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Barry, if we can go straight to Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. I believe that we're going to see um, some messages for all of us who call ourselves Christians, including ourselves. If you please read the 14 and 15, maybe. Is that okay? Unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold, or hot. And 16. And so then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out my mouth. I believe that this is a kind of a very strong word coming right from the words of the true witness. And who is the true witness, if I may, may ask again? According to the scriptures, Jesus is the faithful and true witness because of two things. Number one, the Bible says here, in Revelation 3, 14, I want to just point out one thing. He says, unto the angel. So first of all, this, the, the Laodicean church has a message, and the angel represents a messenger or minister. We talked about that in Galatians 4, 14, mm -hmm. and we found out that uh, an angel represents a minister, but also to the church. Now, the interesting thing about church, every time you see it, is the word ecclesia. It means called out ones. Mm -hmm. So you've been called out of darkness into marvelous light. And so those of us who have an understanding of the message is now being God has sent us a message about our condition. Right. And our condition is a Laodicean condition. Laodicean means a people being judged or the mm. judgment of the people. Mm -hmm. And so as we go through this period of time, we're going to find that in this church, this church refers to the time in which we are now living. And the condition of the church is lukewarm. And so Jesus says here, first of all, as a faithful and true witness, he's telling us our condition mm -hmm. and the condition of all Christianity. All right? right? So let's take a look for a moment. Faithful witness. We first, we first read about the faithful witness in Revelation chapter 1, verse right. 5. The Bible says here, and from Jesus Christ, who is the what? Faithful, faithful. witness. So if we go back to Revelation 3, 14, and it says, unto the faithful and true witness, we find out that Christ is the faithful witness, mm -hmm. but now also the Bible calls Jesus faithful and true. Look at Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, and it's here at verse um, 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Mm -hmm. A horse is a symbol of God's people, his church, mm -hmm. as well. It says here, white representing purity, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and what? True. 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 And in righteousness do he judge and make war. Mm. His eyes were as a flame of fire. His mm. head, and it says, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written which no man knew but himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the Bible goes on and says here, and it says, and out of his mouth, when a sharp two-edged sword, verse 15, and it says, and 
that with it he should smite the nations. The two-edged sword is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And that he shall rule them with a rod of iron, which is law and righteousness. He said, he tread up the winepress in the fierceness of the wrath of God Almighty. For he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this faithful and true witness is none other than Jesus, the faithful witness as, written, as mentioned in Revelation 1, 5. Not only that, the purpose of a faithful witness in, in Proverbs 14, 5 is that he will tell the truth. Look very carefully at Proverbs 14, 5. Can you read that for me? Proverbs 14, uh, Proverbs 14, 5, 5 again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we're going to see. Just a minute here. Mm -hmm. And uh, while my brother Patrick find the text, I, mm -hmm. I just want to come back and remind our friends and to ourselves that since this message was going to be brought to a people that have been judged, yes. uh, no wonder that this message then uh, we understand should have started right after the Church of uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, right. So, so uh, mm -hmm. and we've talked that 18, after 1844, 1844, the judgment The judgment began. is going all right. right. And so the condition of the people of God in a time when the judgment is, is continuing is a, is a condition of lukewarmness. And, and I believe that in the, if we will pay attention of what this <laughs> message is at, I believe that it is very well described by this true witness who is nothing more than Jesus describing our condition so we can, you know, overcome during the time of this judgment. Yes, yes. Right? Brother Patrick, you got the text. Yes. Proverbs 14, 5 says, A faithful witness will not lie, mm -hmm. but a false witness will utter lies. So Jesus is a faithful witness because he will not what? He utter will lie. not lie. But now what is the purpose of Jesus being a faithful witness? Go to verse 25. Read that one for us, Patrick. Okay. A true witness delivereth souls. So right. Jesus' message to Laodicea and telling her her condition is a message to deliver souls and deliver the souls of men and women who are in a lukewarm condition in Christianity today. Mm -hmm. Going on, though, the Bible tells us one other thing about, first of all, Jesus is a faithful witness, and it says he's the beginning of the creation of God. What does it mean when he says he's beginning of the creation of God? Well, if we go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 and 11, when he uh -huh. talks about that he was the creator of mm -hmm. heaven and earth and everything that is, you know, being created. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, it mm -hmm. says that, you know, everything that was, has been created was created yes, by him. Because it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and for him. Right. And without him was not anything made that was made. Also, this says he's the beginning of the creation of God. And Ephesians 3 verse 9 says, God created all things through Christ. Right. Yes. Okay. So he was the origin, the uh, the, the genesis of creation. Yes. So I want to also say that there never was a time when Jesus was not. Mm -hmm. meaning that he was not just, he, he is, it is showing that the word beginning in John chapter 1 is, a, is, is, a, is a, the Greek translation gives you, it gives the understanding that this is before the beginning of our world. Right. He was in the beginning, he's the source or originator of creation right. as Patrick brought out. So it's important that we understand that this faithful witness, why can't he lie? The Bible says in Hebrews 6, 19, 18, look what the Bible says in Hebrews 6, 18, because he said, a faithful, it says a faithful witness cannot lie. Let's see why. Because Jesus is the creator, that means he's God. And in Hebrews 6, 18, the Bible says that by two immutable things, in that, it says, in which it was impossible for God to what? To lie. To lie. So Jesus is a faithful witness and what he says to us about our condition is the truth. Because he is God, he cannot lie, and it is impossible for him as a faithful witness to lie. Yeah, because... And to, and to be a creator, yes. you cannot lie. Yes. Right. Okay, so we move on, mm -hmm. and uh, the description that this faithful witness is given to the church is that, you know, the Christianity, we think that we are rich. Well, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Brother Patrick. Well, he's, uh, he also is called the Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and because he's a faithful and true witness, right. you can say amen. Amen. Yeah, okay. Okay. So 15 and 17, uh, the same chapter 3 of Revelation. There's one more thing to point out. You pointed out Exodus chapter 20, uh -huh. and you went to verses 8 
through 11. Through 11. And it's very important to understand that because the creation of God carries with it a memorial. Mm -hmm. And the memorial of the creation of God is taken from the fact that Christ is the creator of wow. all things. Mm -hmm. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 4, verse 8, he, he tells us something. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Now, six days was the actual six-day week of creation. But on the seventh day, he rested from all his work which he had made or created. Mm -hmm. But now, who was the one that created the world we just found out? Jesus. Jesus. And question, did Jesus make the Sabbath? Of course. Yes. yes. Did Jesus make Sunday? Yeah. The first day of the week, He made yes. the first day of the week as well. Yeah. But on the first day of the week, it was not declared holy by Christ. No. That's right. But the seventh day was declared holy by Christ. Right. But now notice something. So if Jesus is the creator. So in this, he did even before sin was introduced it, into yes. this world. Yes. Before okay. sin was introduced in the world. Right. And even after sin was in the world. Right. The, the seventh day Sabbath was intact. So the seventh day Sabbath has its origin not with creation only, but the seven-day Sabbath had its origin in eternity right. because it's connected to the law of God, and the law of God is everlasting. But let's go one more step. If Christ is the creator, then what did Jesus himself claim about the Sabbath in Mark 2, 27, 2, 28 again? Just want to just remind people, remind you, because we can't, you can't point him as create, beginning of the creation of God and ignore the issue of this, the creation of six-day creation and the seventh day, Sabbath itself. Six right. days, uh, literal days. Six literal 24-hour okay. periods. Okay. Mark right. 2, 27 mm -hmm. says, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Now, so wait a minute. He's Lord also of the what? Sabbath. 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 And the Sabbath, God said, Jesus calls it my holy day. Right. And by the way, one more point again, did Jesus keep the Sabbath in humanity? Yes. In yes. his humanity? Luke yes, he did. 16. Luke 4, 16 says, as his custom was. Right. He, went to church, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. so, so we find that the beginning of the creation of God, Christ is showing himself as creator, but he also points to his seventh-day <laughs> Sabbath as the memorial of him being the creator. Now, yeah, Brother Patrick, I, I, yes. No, I, I was going to ask you, what is then, if we in plain English uh, language, if we can say, what is the condition then that Jesus is presenting to Christianity in this end time? When he says, they are lukewarm, not cold nor hot. Hmm? Well, I just wanted one more point on Christ being the creator. Okay, and then you go ahead. Christ is mentioned as the creator because this is the Laodicean church period, the last period in Christian history. Hmm. This, in this period, this is the period of evolutionism, when creationism is totally forgotten. And but, so, so God wanted to remind us of the fact that this world was created in six days and that he made the Sabbath as a day of rest and a memorial of creation, not to forget it. Remember the Sabbath day. Yes, just around the same time when God was sending this message out, there was a uh, evolution, 1848 type of a, uh, Carl Darwin, Charles Darwin, Charles Darwin, Origin of the Species, right. came out in 1856. But I still want to come back to you um, about the lukewarm. If I want the two of you to elaborate a little more into this, but first listen to this. We'll be right back. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the Book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today. Welcome back. All right. Okay, my brother uh, Patrick. Um, this on Revelation 3, 17 and 18 it describe, um, you know, the condition, but the lukewarm that Jesus is saying, I wish you could be cold or hot, but not, not in the middle. If hot means, you know, on fire for the Lord, mm -hmm. having the first love, why then Jesus saying, I wish you 
you either, if, instead of being lukewarm, and we're going to get into the, this, describe what, what does that mean, uh, call, but call isn't that completely lost? So why Jesus then would like to rather, would rather see somebody in completely coldness instead of just thinking that, they are, that we are Christians, thinking that we are going straight to heaven, thinking that everything is okay with us, when at the end we're going to be lost? Sometimes we usually think of cold as being, you know, the opposite. We think the opposite of hot would be someone who's just living in sin and, mm. and enjoying the world and just... Uh, totally in rebellion against God mm. and doing wicked things. Um, mm. But cold actually means a, a um, absence of heat, absence of the fervor and zealous spirit to mm. be on fire for God. And the condition is seen in Job chapter 23, verse 3. Okay. In that verse... Job says, okay. Oh, that I knew that I might, f where I might find him. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. And so cold is, when you feel cold, you, can f you know you're cold, and so you know you lack heat, and you're wishing for heat. You want to find Jesus again. So it's a, an awareness. God wants us to be aware of our need rather than uh, thinking that everything is okay when yeah. everything is not okay. Yeah. Okay, okay so that should take us, Pastor Perry, to the next Bible verses, Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Well, because well, what we're going to see is all of us can be found in these verses. Okay? I want to I find out, I want to point out some other things, two other things that are very pertinent for what we're dealing with now in our community and society as well. First, just a little short backtrack, and that was the fact that we talked about the Sabbath being made a creation, but also the other thing that was the beginning of the creation of God was marriage. Mm. And marriage and the Sabbath were the two institutions that came out of Eden after the, cre after the fall of man. But in just recent months, we have, watched this, we have watched marriage, the marriage institution in the United States become uh, becoming torn apart or brought, torn down. And so we find here that that institution is under attack, along with the issue of, and the next institution to be under attack will be the Bible Sabbath. Mm. But now going back, the reason why is because the Bible says they are, the, the churches themselves are in a lukewarm condition in Christianity. And that, uh, but this, but they, Jesus said, would you be cold or hot? Now the word cold not only carries with the idea of people being indifferent or that they're not being enthusiasm or they're not really in the work of God or they're not really on fire for God. It also gives the fact that many are in deep iniquity, mm. but it also points to something else that will be happening at the time when the church is on a lukewarm condition. In Matthew 24, 12, it says there, can you read it for me? I want uh, you to read it, Matthew 24, 12. I want you to just look at this with me. 24, 12. Matthew, Matthew 24, 12. All right. All right. We want to see a little bit about cold, but I want to show you what's going to, what the Bible's also saying in that verse right quick. Matthew 24, 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because transgression of God's law shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, meaning the love of many for God will wax cold because they're iniquity. But not only that, the Bible also foretells that while iniquity in the person is, 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 is becoming stronger, the Bible also shows that the mystery of iniquity would be asserting itself and its power at the time of the lukewarm condition of the church. The of mystery Christian, of the iniquity. Mystery of iniquity. Can, can you expand uh, a little more than that? The mystery of iniquity is the, is, a, is, the, is, a, is the power that will exalt himself above God right. and claim that he is God and that he is another God on earth. All right, the little horn it's power man, that we have been describing. Horn. It's a man who makes the claim that he is God. Well, by the way, mm -hmm. since uh, the next verses that I would like you to read, uh, uh, 6, 15 and, and 17, mm -hmm. it, it describes, you know, that the people or the church is going to think that they are rich, we are rich, yes. we are in need of nothing, and no wonder in Revelation, I believe it's Revelation 18, 
uh, in Romans 17, my brother Patrick, it described, oh, oh Pastor Barry, you can do it, mm -hmm. 17, 3 to 7, it described a very rich church, Revelation 17, 3 to 7, and Brother Patrick, you can have Revelation 18, 7 and 8, after uh, Revelation uh, 17, 3 to 7. 3 to 7. Mm -hmm. It is describing a very rich church, mm -hmm. rich in every sense of the world. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, can, can, can it you? Says, so he read? carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet color beast, full of names and blasphemy, mm -hmm. having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet in mm -hmm. color. It says, and decked with gold and precious stones mm -hmm. and pearls, having a golden cup of her in her hand, mm -hmm. full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornications. Mm -hmm. And upon her head, I'm sorry, upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, mm -hmm. and the abominations of the earth. So, okay, okay we can stop right there. Mm -hmm. What kind of a church is being described right there? Having gold, silver, golden cup, it's a church, it's, it, it's being described a poor church or a very rich church. Uh, it's describing a church that's, that's very rich and by the way, in material things. Right, yes. Brother Patrick, you can read it too. Revelation uh, 18, 18, 7 and, and, eight. Seven Se and 8. Right. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. Now mm. this is describing the same woman. Mm. The same church. The same church, right. Okay. Woman represents a church in the New Testament. Right. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore her plague shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. See, one of the biggest arguments that we hear time after time is, how can this church or my church or that church it can be, you know, uh, in confusion or in mistake when we are so big, we are so rich, and we are being uh, for almost 2,000 years. See, and what Jesus is coming to this time of judgment is saying, you know what? You're saying that you're rich. You're saying that you're in need of nothing, and you don't know that you are what? Uh, le let's read uh, Revelation 3, uh, 17. It says, because thou sayest, I am rich, uh -huh. and increased with goods, mm -hmm. and have need of nothing, mm -hmm. and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. So wait a minute. In the eyes of the mankind, of us, we, can, might, we might think that, you know, uh, a church, or we might be rich, and, and, and we don't need anything. Now, that also, spiritually speaking, we, we have to bring... We have to understand the spiritual things and the spiritual ma manner too. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true that we as Christians many times take it for granted? We, we say, well, Jesus did everything on the cross for me. Jesus, you know, he paid my sins. He paid for my uh, second death. So I don't need anything. All I need is to say that I'm a Christian, that I accept Christ. And I, I'm, as a matter of fact, that is a very popular teaching that goes like this, like a once, once I'm safe, I'm always going to be safe. That's becoming more and more popular. I believe Jesus' message over here go very, with a very strong language to let either to the rich church or poor church, uh, or <laughs> we, might, we might think that we are rich because we got the, you know, beautiful truth. It's only, it's also for us. Mm -hmm. we, we might be, we cannot be crossing our arm and say, well, since I know the truth of the Sabbath, I know the truth of the second coming, I know the truth of the sanctuary, you know, and become a lukewarm. Jesus' message, rebuke, comes as a straight testimony and say, you know what? You are blind, you are righteous, you, 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 you are naked, and if we don't, come out of that condition, what will happen to us? It, it says right there. Jesus said. Read it. Please. In uh, the same book of Revelation, chapter 3. 
Yes, what will um, happen to us? Oh, verse 16. Yeah. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, mm. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Okay, can, can you elaborate? Can you explain a little more? What, what does that mean? That means we have a form of religion, but are denying the power, and we don't sense our need, and we're not turning to him with all of our heart. And so we're just going through the forums, and he can't offer them. When, they, when our prayers come up to him, one, he can't offer one them. One of the reasons... Up. Oh, sorry. Um, no, that, no, that's great. One of the reasons why it's, it's like that is because of the condition. When you think about rich, most people think in rich in the areas of just materialism, but the rich here refers also to pride. Mm -hmm. uh, a spiritual pride. Spir a spiritual pride. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, 11, look what it says in Proverbs 20, 11. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, mm -hmm. but the poor that have understanding search of him out. Mm -hmm. Notice the Bible says that you're rich, but the rich here means you're wise in your own conceit, mm -hmm. meaning you're proud and, and self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you, because you are proud and self-sufficient, you don't have a need for Christ. Mm. So the Bible is also showing in Jeremiah 9.23, let not this, look at Jeremiah 9.23 to give it a warning. God gives a warning to the rich man. Okay. Uh, and so the warning to the rich man is not only to the physical rich, but, but, but spiritual. also spiritual rich. Mm -hmm. In Jeremiah 9.23, notice okay. what the Bible says there. In Jeremiah 9.23, it says this. It says, let not, it says, thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his what? In his riches, because a rich man is what? Wise in his own conceit, meaning he exalts himself with pride and self-sufficiency. Right. It says, but let him glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. But if we, are, if we are so proud, we don't have any need right. to understand God. Why don't we do this? Since this is such an important topic, we're going to pick up right on this. In the meantime, my dear friends out there, God bless you. And may the Lord help us all to find the Lord with all our hearts and all our might. In the name of Jesus, we pray all this. Amen. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.